today's news, Blackpink talk about YG Entertainment strictness on dating. Not surprisingly, it looks like as long as the members of Blackpink are under contract with YG Entertainment, they will never ever be able to date a boy. <laughs> At least that's what they're speculating. I'd like to start off by reading a couple quotes from the members themselves. Jisoo, the first time I met Yang Hyun Suk Sajang Nim, he asked me, do you happen to have a boyfriend right now? At the time, I was wearing a ring and he even asked what that ring was. I didn't have a boyfriend and it was just a ring. Jenny also said, since the first day I entered YG Entertainment, Yang Hyun Suk Sajang Nim told me to always be careful of boys. I think dating bands will always exist during our time under the label. See, the second quote is key here because it gives the information we need to find out about the whole situation without reading their contracts. It says, I think dating bands will always exist during our time under the label. So it's not saying that under the contract that they're contractually obligated not to date, but that they are under a ban and that it'll probably <laughs> exist. Right before we turn this on, I was brainstorming what other job besides K-pop idol exists where you are not allowed to freely date. I could not come up with any other job in the world where you're not allowed to date ever while you're working. Well, this is actually a very big Asian entertainment thing in general because before I even became interested in K-pop, I was already interested in Japanese entertainment. And not only do they have the bands, but it's actually stricter in Japan than it is in Korea per se on what is allowed to happen amongst dating. Do explain a little bit more, please. Well, there's a company called Johnny's Entertainment, for example, that has a lot of boy bands that I really liked when I first started getting involved and interested in Asian culture, entertainment culture. And Johnny's has a very strict no dating band that goes on that until you reach like your 40s, you're not allowed to date outwardly or get married. Wow. Or at least like your mid 30s, like it, it's up there. Just focusing on the four members of Blackpink here though, imagine being 21, 20, I mean, that's how old these girls are. They've already been under YG, one of them signed in 2010, so six years before they debut, Blackpink debuted this year, correct? Mm -hmm. And they're not allowed ever, as long as they're working hard, dancing, singing, recording, whatever they're doing, performing, to ever indulge in that. I mean, girls are horny too. Really, really horny. Like, I was all over girls when I was 16. I cannot imagine at all, at all, at all, at all, not being able to pursue my desire as a person, as a human being, because I was trying to make it big, make it bigger, make it big, 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 bigger. I mean, this is part of the reason I personally think why some of the girl groups this year have decided not to renew their contracts. And I feel like women are held to a higher standard than men. Like, mm. the boys aren't allowed to date either, but yet they do somehow, or I'm sure they're getting laid a little bit here and there. I mean, I know young K-pop fans don't really want to hear that, but I'm sure the boys get away with more than the girls. So here uh. the girls are. The CEO is like, what's that ring for? Well, because they have the dating rings in Korea where when you're in a serious relationship, they have them all over the rings. world. Yes, but it's very like Korean culture. The couple ring is, it's more cultural than it is here in the US, for example. My point is he's bringing the hammer down before they even debuted. That conversation probably happened years ago. Yeah, probably. And he's just making sure that, hey, you know that you're never allowed to date. And don't you ever consider thinking about breaking that rule. I mean, think about it, G-Dragon, not allowed to date. He's been dating that Japanese girl for years. But Papa YG, and this is why they call him Papa YG, because he's like the overbearing dad. He, you know, when everything came out with G-Dragon, he still protected G-Dragon. I read a lot of different articles on this and different groups that have encountered these bands in the past. It compared YG to SM. Okay. And it's almost like what I read was SM kind of throws their artists under the bus and as soon as they're in a relationship, they make it public so it's, it's not a big scandalous news. Whereas YG tends to like keep everything hush hush and you date in secret. And then if it comes out that you're dating somebody, they try to like, protect your image. Some other major groups that have encountered this ban are 21, 
which didn't get their ban lifted until 2012. Well, it was lifted in 2012 for Bum and for Dara. And now they're minus one member, 21's now down to three members. Yes, and I don't know if it's ever been lifted for CL or not. I don't know if she's been lifted. Get the joke? She's totally been lifted. <laughs> but CL was quoted in 2013 saying that this was actually a good thing for her because they were forced to focus on their music and she found that it was really difficult to even meet up with people, let alone date because their schedules were so busy. And also there's this intimidation factor of dating somebody who's so famous. That is true, but as much as I admire CL, I feel like she's super good at being politically correct. And if she's gonna say whatever is the most appropriate thing, so her saying that is just her way of maneuvering through the system in the most best way she's going to profit the highest. <laughs> she and nothing against skill. CL, yeah. That's totally the right thing to say. But CL's horny too. I just saying, she's, come on man, she's over in New York and she's touring around North America now. You're not saying she's getting any tail at all. It's a shame that they're not able to date and it will help them grow their business as artists and as a group together, maybe a little bit more efficiently than if they took more time off to date and there was that sort of thing. So in that way, it's a good idea that they have this in place. And I'm not saying that YG should change any rules and I'm not even saying that I'm against it. But there is another side to this that doesn't get explored and K-pop is going to have to deal with this as time goes on. And something's gonna end up happening with Blackpink. I mean, they're the new bigger than twice, bigger than girls generation. I was watching their dance practice yesterday evening, the new video that came out in the studio. They're freaking spot on perfect dancing for them. I was mesmerized and glued to the screen. And I really like watching them. And I like the fact that one of their members is from Thailand and one of them's from New Zealand. And it's really good mix of branching out K-pop the way that it should be that way. But this is a rule that's not gonna be able to sustain itself. We shall see. Comments, you guys, about this one. What do you think about dating bands in K-pop? And do you think that there is a different standard for men and women? Ooh, good question. If you could fanfic ship these girls with anyone, who would you ship them with? Comments! Click like button, you guys. Thank you so much for supporting us. And don't forget to subscribe for more Hollyback News and hashtag BTS t-shirts linked down below. That's it. We're out of here. Hasta luego! Bye!